Oh, mister, I'm going to do the dishes later. I mean, they're going to be here. They're not going anywhere. Well, I, <laughs> they're definitely not going anywhere. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick and welcome back to Sweet Heat, the show where everything I make is a little bit sweet and a little bit spicy, como yo. Uh, <laughs> so I'm really excited because it's close to the holidays and I'm trying to be a little bit festive. And what I'm gonna be making for you today is something that is near and dear to my heart. It's something that a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Mexican Americans in the US make around the holidays, tamales. And my family normally makes savory tamales. We make uh, tamales rojo de puerco. And I'm gonna change it up a little bit because I wanted something a little bit sweet. I love tamales de elote. They are so good. They're made usually around harvest time in the late summer and the fall here in Mexico, and it's all fresh corn. But I'm gonna change it up a little bit because I really love blue corn. I think it has a really intense nutty flavor, and I'm gonna pair it with the white corn that grows here in Sinaloa. I think it's gonna be a really, really delicious combination. And to top it off, the tamal is a little bit sweet, but I'm going to add a little bit more sweetness and a little bit more heat with a beautiful syrup. It's going to make your house smell like the holidays. And if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you like this show, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and you'll be alerted every time there's a new episode of Sweet Heat. Purr. So the sweet in this dish is going to come from one of my favorite ingredients. I've talked about this before. I'm probably gonna put it in just about everything I make on the show. This is piloncillo. This is the Mexican brown sugar. This is actually the byproduct of the processing of the sugar cane. It's really delicious. It has a really deep caramelly, almost molassesy, smoky flavor. And these are the heat. These are actually fresh chili de arbol from my plant. Come here. <laughs> Can you hold him to the camera? Yeah. Que bonito. Sí. But I'm actually going to be using dried chili de árbol. It has a really intense uh, flavor and I've crushed them so that you don't get like a huge piece of chili de árbol in the tamal and also in the syrup. Now I'm going to talk about all the other things that I'm going to add. So one of the key ingredients that's going to make your house smell so incredibly festive and holiday-like is the canela. This is Mexican cinnamon. It's a different variety than what you're probably used to in the U.S. This is uh, Ceylon cinnamon. Um, it has a much thinner bark and a much more floral, almost fruity flavor. The other thing that I'm going to use that I love, and this is actually common in different parts of the country, this is allspice or pimenta gorda, melted butter. I have to admit something. So in the recipe, I just called for melted butter. But when I was making this this morning, I put it on the stove and I walked away and I kind of forgot about it until I smelled something a little bit nutty and I thought, oh, shit. I forgot the butter. Um, so I ran over, it hadn't burned luckily, and I didn't want to throw it out and start over again. So today we're going to be using slightly browned butter. I love to use citrus just generally, but specifically for the holidays, um, citrus season starts, and I feel like oranges are just a part of the season. And this is fresh Mexican corn. And then for this recipe, I'm using uh, maseca, and this is maiz azul. I just love this flavor. I love this color. I think it's really, really intense and vibrant. And I'm calling for granulated sugar. The granulated sugar here is not processed. And so it actually looks more like what we would see uh, in unrefined or organic sugar in the US. Look how hot it is. Look, are you looking at the sweat on my face? No, I'm looking at the fog in oh, your, your glasses. glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make the masa. So I've got 400 grams of the dry instant masa. Into the sink it goes with all the other dishes. Uh, and then I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. This is one teaspoon of ground canela. And half a teaspoon of ground chili de arbol, which Misael was very, very skeptical about having that much in the masa. Weren't you? I was. He was. Um, now I'm putting my brown butter. Oh, okay. Why do you have to expose me in every episode? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you expose yourself to me all the time. <laughs> oh, salt. Yeah, yeah. Salt, very important. And 
There's quite a bit of salt in this, but in order to actually taste what's happening in this tamal, it's really important to make sure that this is well seasoned. So I put the gram amount as well as the volume amount. It's two and a half teaspoons of salt and now two cups of water. Now I'm going to mix this up. Uh, you can use a spoon if you want, but I think it's just fun with your hands. You know, I'm just gonna get in there. You wanna make sure that you stir very well. Make sure that there's no pockets of the dry masa in there. Also, you wanna make sure that all the spices are incorporated and that all of the salt is evenly distributed because it will melt as it sits. Okay, and this looks really good. Boom. <laughs> We will let this sit for about 30 minutes and you will see it's going to get really thick. I told you. So I've got my corn. It's like, it's actually pretty hot still. I uh, boiled it earlier today. So I've trimmed the edges and I'm going to save all of the husks. This is what I'm going to use to actually make the tamales. And actually this is really, this is like the perfect size right here. This is exactly what you want. So make sure that you don't uh, rip these off it's, and they, they come off pretty easily actually. Um, it smells so good. They smell so corny. <laughs> so I have this little setup going. This is my I'm cutting corn off the cob little setup. This actually keeps all the corn in a contained space so that you don't have corn all over your house and you don't have to sweep a little bit later. Just start at the top and then just with a little saw motion back and forth all the way down. And one cob is about one cup. So now we're gonna mix this into the masa. So you can see actually, this is a lot, ah, wow, look, it is like completely absorbed this, all the liquid in there. Whenever you make tamales, there's always manteca or mantequilla or some kind of oil in the dough because you need it to come off the husk. If you don't add the oil, it's gonna probably read a little bit dry just from a flavor and texture perspective, but more importantly, it's gonna be really difficult to get it out of the hoja. And the way that my dad actually used to be able to tell whether there was enough manteca was the slap test, which you basically just <laughs> slap it. And if your palm comes out clean, which mine is, then it's done. Now we're going to add the corn in there. All I wanna do is evenly distribute all of the corn. And that looks really good. Masa. Okay, now we're gonna get ready for the syrup. Stop right there. Que traes? No, you can't take it. You can't take my gorritas. Dámelas. Period. So now for my piloncillo, I've got just a normal box grater. This is the way that you grate your piloncillo. I just realized I'm flicking piloncillo in my shirt. Oh, because I didn't put my apron on. Okay, so here we are. We're just gonna pretend like nothing happened. Piloncillo is all grated, and now I'm going to work on the mandarina. I need my peeler. There is a technique that I use whenever I'm peeling any citrus that I really like a lot, and it's just go back and forth gently Sawing, we'll do ASMR, <laughs> mandarina. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make the syrup. I'm going to add one teaspoon of pimenta gorda, which is also allspice. I'm gonna give a big pinch of the ground chili de arbol. I'm gonna throw in my zest of the mandarina and all of my piloncillo and a three inch stick of canela. Then all you do is add one cup of water. Bring this to a boil, I'll reduce it down to a simmer and I'm gonna let it simmer for about 
12 minutes just so that all the flavors come together and then we'll strain it and cool it down. She's a baby. Yeah. She's not flaca, she's a baby. <laughs> all right, so my masa is ready. I have the syrup going behind me. It smells so good in here. It's so funny because even though it's like really hot, it's actually starting to smell like the holidays. Just that cinnamon and orange and the allspice is like really, really amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna separate out the husks. I'm gonna use the little pieces to line the bottom of my pan. That's just a little insurance policy that nothing is gonna stick. It will actually add a little bit more flavor to the simmering liquid. I'll start with the big one first. So basically what you wanna do, I'm gonna take a half cup measuring cup and I'm just gonna get a nice big scoop. And then put that in this very center of the husk and then just kind of form a little log. And then you just fold one side over and then just fold the other side over. And then you take the little tails and then just fold down and under. And that is how you make the tamal. It smells really good. It smells great. So this is my kind of smell for Christmas. What, and I can't have this smell at my Christmas too? No, you can't. Why? No, I'm just kidding. Jerk. Normally when we cook tamales, uh, my dad, well, you line the, the bottom of the pot with uh, the hojas. One of the things that happens if you walk away or you're not careful is that all of the water will evaporate and that's when you'll get burning and the tamales will stick to the bottom of the pan. So this is the insurance policy that that will not happen. So you can do a couple of things. What you need to do is you need to make a little stand inside the, the pot so that the tamales can have something to, to support them. Um, I actually have a lot of extra hojas, so I think I'm gonna see if this will work. Otherwise, just get a piece of aluminum foil and make a small ball about that size and then you can just lean them in. You want to do this so that the tail is down and the seam is up. And then just lean them up against the ball or the wad of uh, hojas. And then just go around in a circle. Place them in. And that is your little mountain of tamales. And so now I'm gonna you can add just fresh water. I have this really delicious corn stock that this is the water that the corn was boiling in and I feel like I want to use it. It's already, got, it's already got salt and it's got a lot of corn flavor. So why waste it? And then you just want the water to kind of come up a little bit up the side of the pot. I don't want the tamales sitting in water, but they need to steam. Now this goes to the stove. I'm gonna start it on high because I want it to come to a boil quickly. And I'm gonna cover it. And you can't really walk away at this point because it's really important that as soon as it starts to boil, you turn it down to a simmer. And all you want is like a gentle simmer so that the steam actually comes up and the steam is what is cooking the tamales. And they're gonna go probably about 40 to 50 minutes. Again, it's gonna depend on your flame. It's gonna depend on your pot. It's also gonna depend on how thick the tamales are. Um, it's a video again. <laughs> All right, and now it's been about 45 minutes. So the way that you check to see if they're done, you actually have to pull one out and let it cool off a little bit. Also, they're gonna be really soft. These, they feel firmer than when we put them in. So that is a good sign. I'm gonna pull one out carefully because the masa is very soft and delicate. If I try and open this up right now, it's gonna stick to the husk. So you actually just have to let it sit for about five minutes. It'll cool off slightly. If it comes directly off the husk, it's totally done. If not, you put it back in and let it cook for another five minutes and then recheck it. So now it's cooled off. It's been five minutes and it's a little bit sticky. I think it might need a few more minutes. 
No worries. All right. All we do is wrap it back up and we'll put it back in. So while we're waiting for the tamales, I'm going to go ahead and strain the delicious syrup. It smells so good. It also tastes really good. It's a very odd sound, but <laughs> the ASMR syrup. So this is crema. This is one version of the cremas that here that exist here in Mexico, and I think it kind of helps cut through the uh, the sweetness of the of the syrup. All right, and I'm just gonna like I'm just stirring it to kind of thin it out a little bit. It's the consistency of of a thick Greek yogurt or a sour cream. It's been another five minutes and wait, did I turn that on? Like now I'm paranoid because that stupid chicken. Yes. Okay. That is on. <laughs> no, it's terrible. Okay. So um, yes, the camera is rolling and it's been five minutes. So I know that these tamales are done. So I'm going to grab it. Oh, nice and steamy. Oh, so excited about this. I love a nice fat tamal. So good. Okay, I'm going to actually, you know what I'm going to do? So I have, I'm going to plate this really nice. So it is perfectly delicious to eat this tamal the way it is. And actually when I've had tamal de lotes uh, in other parts of the country, they're just selling them on the side of the road uh, or, you know, the sidewalk and you just get it and you go eat it as, you know, while you're walking. Um, I wanted to kind of make this more of the holiday version, a little bit more of maybe like a sit down. Uh, you could actually have it for brunch. You could have it for dessert really anytime because it's really super delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and plate this up. I've got my crema and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a smear on the bottom. And I'm going to put my tamal over top like that. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the syrup. Oh, it's still steamy and beautiful. Oh, so nice. Ah, oh, that syrup is so dark and gorgeous. And then, because I like a little bit of heat to counter my sweet, I'm gonna give it a little bit more chili de arbol and a little bit of queso. You can use cotija, you can use fresco. Vanilla, whatever you whatever you have. I mean, honestly, even like a little bit of white cheddar would be good in this as well. And that is my tamal de lote. My favorite time. Oh my god! And I'm so hungry. I didn't. I actually haven't eaten lunch, and I haven't finished my break. Or I never finished my breakfast. So this is everything. Oh my god. Actually, before I take a bite, I'm gonna let Misael, can you just shoot that? I love the way the corn looks in the tamal. I just think it's really cool. And actually this, are you probably in the shot? Like, so I should probably like stop talking. Yeah. Okay. Can I start now? You told me to go in. <laughs> I, that's true. Fine. Fine. Um, so that uh, this style of tamal is actually fairly common. There are places in Mexico, like in the Yucatan, they use either a yellow or a white corn and then black beans um, are inside and it looks really striking. You have like this really, really white yellow masa and then you have like these beautiful black beans on the inside. Um, so that was sort of the inspiration for this tamal. And make sure I get a lot of syrup because that's my favorite part actually. Um. Mm. Mm. I feel like I say this every time, but it's so good. Oh my God. There's just so much happening. The masa, because of the sweetness of the syrup, it reads a little bit salty. And you've got the beautiful texture of the, the plump corn that kind of pop in your mouth. And then the, uh, the crema, because it's a little bit on the sour side, kind of cuts through the sweetness. It's just like, it's almost like a roller coaster ride inside your mouth. It's like really, really good. And I'm going in again. It's really, really delicious. That syrup, I mean, that's, it's giving me life right now. Mm. I am so happy about this. 
It turned out so well. I think it's really beautiful. It's really festive. It makes your house smell like the holidays. I hope you try this. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you have a really, really great holiday. And 2021 is going to be our year. Thank you.